pulling system. And after all this, we're all gonna have our fingers crossed that the pulling works too. So you can scan that code and open it up on your phone. You can type in that web address if you'd like to do it that way. Or you can do this via text. I would recommend that as the last option because a couple of the polls are not gonna work well for you in text, although most of them will. Okay. Don't actually take a picture. You should be able to just open the camera, hold it up there, and have something pop up that says, do you wanna open Poll EV and click that link. Again, turn to your village here. Okay. Other people at your table or nearby should be able to help, call for help, wave around. You should be able to get some folks to help you here. All right. So if you are not familiar with live polling, here's how it's going to work, if all goes well. We're gonna pop up a few different question types throughout today and ask you to weigh in on your phones. And it might be a couple different kinds of questions. It might be a multiple choice where you can pick one or pick a couple. In most cases, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. We've let it stand that you have unlimited choices. We're going on the honor system. That's so that you can answer for somebody else at your table if people do not have phones. But we trust you not to completely skew the results and vote over and over and over again. You might have open-ended questions. We might ask you to type in a text response or something like that, and we'll see some of your text responses or vote something up and down. So, do most people have it in at this point? Okay. We're going to start you off with something really hard and ask you a question around how do you know you're a Vermont designation champion? So, you should be able to go to that poll and see a question popping up at this point. Are you seeing a question? Okay. So, you can choose one of these answers. Go ahead and choose up to two answers for how do you know when you're a Vermont designation champion? And these are your choices if you can't read them all that well. You can explain tips in the grocery line, and you do. Maybe there's a poster of the DHCD rock stars in your office. Wouldn't all of us like that? Maybe you have memorized the state benefits table forwards and backwards. Maybe you're still bitter that the town next door got designated before yours. Maybe you're here because you're scheming to get Maple Creamy Stand benefits into Designation 2050 reform. Or maybe something else. So, take just another minute or two for your top two choices. If there's somebody near you who also needs your help to vote, help them vote. I'm gonna pull out a timer here. You don't have to hit anything. It's all gonna register for you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here's what we say. Wow, we've got a lot of TIFF fans in the room. I was not expecting that one. Even some woo-hoos for TIFFs. That was a first, I think. Also, a lot of Maple Creamy fans. <laughs> <laughs> we did not expect you were all here for that, but well, we'll see if that comes out in your plans later on. Okay, so now you know how to vote with live polling. Keep those phones handy because you're going to need them again for some real purposes in a moment. Um, I'm Rebecca Stone, the Community Workshop. I'm so excited that I've had the chance to talk to so many of you over the last few weeks and over the last however many years, of course and really excited also to get to share with so many of you today what we've heard from many people who are not in the room, including many people who've probably never thought or talked about designation programs before in their lives. I've been out asking people all over the state, have you even heard of designation programs? What do you think? And I get a lot of blank stares. I've gotten a lot of people to say, what? And then when I start talking about downtowns and village centers in these places that we love, people start nodding their heads and they have a lot to say. So, I wanna actually start with an exercise. Some of you have already done this in this program, but you get to do it again. 
I love an exercise, no matter what kind of planning I'm doing, that starts with a little bit of history here called the Six Word Story. Legend has it that years ago, Ernest Hemingway was having lunch with friends and they made a bet with him that he couldn't write a six word story. Of course he took the bet. And of course he came up with something amazing. And his story, legend has it, was for sale, baby shoes never worn. Pretty hard to top that. Apparently the story is not true, but it's such a good one that we have to keep telling it. And also adapt it. So I love asking people, what is your six word vision? Whatever context that happens to be. And I'm gonna clear these responses because we tested it earlier. I wanna ask you that right now, even if you've already give us, given us one, Take a moment and give us your six word vision right now for Vermont's designation programs. You can cheat on this one. If you have more than one, go ahead and give us two or three. And as you share your six word visions, we're gonna start to see them popping up on the stage. Or, what's up? It'll start coming in. It just takes a second, a little lag. More housing, more money, more access. Growth is okay now. Have some mathematical challenge going on here, that's okay. <laughs> All towns, big and small, thriving. Communities thrive when we gather. Denser, walkable, affordable housing. Healthy, equitable communities, innovative, innovating and growing. Create housing for Vermont's future. Infrastructure investment trumps small town politics. Vibrant communities with opportunities for all. Nothing about us without us. Vibrant, creative, connected places for all. Act 250, still sprawl, what's next? <laughs> Growing old in a dense, walkable community. I love that little cheat there, I caught that. <laughs> More homes cost money, raise taxes. Create environments for people to succeed. Help more climate resilient housing. Plan for our uncertain future today. Working landscape balanced with compact centers. More housing in resilient, safe centers. Welcome home, you belong here too. Pre-existing frameworks for affordable green lifestyles. Growth must be climate smart. Simpler, more housing green growth. Easy, helpful, and results meaningful outcomes. Keep Vermont wonderful with future planning. Intentionality and inclusion for resilient progress. These are gonna keep coming in. I can tell you're sharing a lot, and unfortunately, we can't spend the whole time, but we are capturing every single one of them. We will share them back out so that you can read them all. Feel free to keep typing them for a minute here if you want to. We'll cut it off in a second. These are amazing. Part of what we're doing in this process is capturing every one of these individual visions, six word visions that we can capture, and then taking a look at what they all mean when we start putting them together. So, I'm gonna cut it off, finish your last thought here for a second. If you have more that you did not get to type in, we're gonna give you sticky notes in a minute because we are here to plan after all, and you can share more six word visions on your sticky notes. I do wanna share with you some that have come in already that have been pretty powerful though. Vermont, more than flannel and maple syrup. Vibrant communities surrounded by healthy landscape. Vibrant communities supported by easy button. Public infrastructure investments in water and sewer. Opportunity, choice, and prosperity for everyone. Beautiful, creative, multimodal, healthy, thriving communities. Fewer programs, more benefits, less hassle. Black and brown people finally owning homes. Vermont achieves affordable housing for all residents. And Vermont strong for all, always. That is just a sample. There are more and more and more, and they are beautiful and creative and challenging. 
There is something interesting when we start to look at them all. There are different layers of them. We put them all together and some of the really common expected words pop up in those word clouds again. Not all that surprising, although maybe there are a few surprising words here. But we can actually start to tease out several different layers of vision. And this is gonna help shape our work for the rest of the day. We see a few different things. We see some of these statements that are really about why we're here today. Why are we even doing this work of designations and gathering to spend a day here in Randolph Center? Some of them are a little bit more about how Vermont will grow and evolve, how it should, how it must, how we want it to. And some of them are really specifically about what the designation program should do and be and become. Here's a snapshot of what we see around what those designation programs should be. It might be things like village centers reimagined to include infill, or one designation, all land included. Fewer programs, more benefits, less hassle. That would go in that category. Public infrastructure investments in water and sewer. I will say of all the thousands of six word visions I've collected in planning, that is probably the first one that mentioned sewer, but here we are. <laughs> We're going to dig into those in the afternoon deep dive. The hows are about how Vermont needs to address really important themes ahead. Vital, well-planned places, affordable housing, investing in watersheds, saving towns, achieving complete streets in every Vermont town, art and creativity infused in everything. This is what we're going to dig into next in this morning's deep dive. But before we do, we just want to spend a couple more minutes honing in on this big why of really why we're all here, why are we even investing in designations and spending time on these big topics? What do we see for our future in Vermont? And these are a few snapshots of those powerful whys that we saw. Vibrant communities surrounded by healthy landscape or supported by that easy button, connected and livable, Growth, but make it sustainable and equitable. Equitable, multimodal, multimodal, beautiful, creative, healthy, love, living, thriving communities. Connected and unique, robust downtowns abound. So I'm going to give you a couple last poll questions here before we really put you to work at your tables. So pick up those phones again. The first one is to take a look at those visions that I just shared. Of course, they are just a sampling of what we pulled out of all of them, but they represent an interesting snapshot. And we're curious, out of those nine or so, which of those whys feel the closest to you to why we're really all here today? So what? take a minute. What is easy button? What's an easy button? I think that was an idea suggested by somebody who's here today. Does that person want to explain or own up to it? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a staples reference, unfortunately. So for those of you who couldn't hear from Alex, <laughs> <laughs> this is a product that Staples actually sells. It's a big red button that says easy, and theoretically, you push it and all your problems go away. Though I have not quite found that to be the case. Um, so yes, yeah, so if we all had that easy button. So pick, pick up to three of these that you feel are closest to what our why might be, or other if you feel like none of them are. Not that any of these are right, but we're curious which ones get closest right now. Take about another 10 seconds on this. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And let's see what you said. All right, we have a real winner out of that lead here. Vibrant communities surrounded by healthy landscapes. No accident, I'm sure. That is really our state planning goal in a nutshell. And a lot of others right there in the middle that all feel very important to people. So the very last challenge I'm gonna give you before we go into deep dive is a total experiment, I'm gonna admit, and it may be complete chaos and not work at all, but it'll be fun to try. We're gonna give you a chance, given what you see here, where the energy is, 
So definitely vibrant communities surrounded by healthy landscape. There's a lot of love for that easy button. Connected in unique, robust downtowns abound. Opportunity, choice, prosperity for everyone. Growth, but sustainable and equitable. These are all getting some good support. We're gonna do our best effort to rewrite this and come up with something awesome in about one minute. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna give you a chance to do that open-ended response again. So you type in your best shot, but when you do, everybody else gets an upvote and downvote button along with it. So any idea that you see getting typed in, you can vote it up, you can vote it down, and you'll instantly get a chance to see which ones are getting voted up. And you might say, okay, I see what people like. I'm gonna take a stab at rewriting that. And we'll see if we can get any closer to something really, really good. We have one minute until I need to start the instructions for the next activity, so I'm gonna start my timer, and you can go, and we'll see what we get to at the end. There you go. We see the first ones coming in. Walkable places, money. Vibrant communities. I see an upvote, downvote, three ups. Going crazy, five ups for money. Nine for walkable places. Seven for money. Up. Here comes vibrant communities from the bottom. <laughs> Embracing older and historic communities, thrive or die. That sounds like New Hampshire's in the room. <laughs> oh, money's coming back from behind. Vibrant, resilient communities for all, lively communities with healthy landscapes coming up. Center, inclusion, and diversity. Okay, some new ideas creeping up here. All right, we got 30 seconds left. Vibrant, resilient communities for all is getting up there, but walkable places is way up at the top. Is that where it's gonna land? And we've got 10. Oh, no we don't, I was said. Okay, that's it, walkable places. Interesting. All right, so that gives you an interesting snapshot into where the energy is in the room as we go into our first deep dive session. It's about 11 o'clock. We are scheduled to have lunch at 12.30. We're gonna do a report out, a rapid report out, in fact, at 12.15. So that means we've got about an hour and 15 minutes to introduce what you're gonna be doing at tables and go do a really great activity. Well, some sleeper ones still coming in. People are voting here while I'm talking. I'm gonna shut you off. <laughs> <laughs> so, at your tables, we're gonna do what's called a deep dive, which means you are gonna go deep into some big questions for the next hour and 15 minutes or so. But I wanna introduce you to you what we're doing. So, we just did the why. Now we're gonna go back to those hows, those big themes that we know are really, really important to the future of Vermont, to what's coming at us when we look to 2050, things that we know the designation programs need to address or at least need to consider. And these are the topics on your table signs. Right here, some of the six word visions, just a few, that really help shape what we might want to see out of these topics. Interesting though, breaking news coming right now from Randolph Center, Vermont. A student experiment unfortunately works. Time Machine instantly transports all of Randolph Center to the year 2050. A little scary, hold on. This is actually good news. Not only to 2050, but to the annual designation summit in 2050. So you are right where you should be, in fact. And Vermont is probably looking a whole lot rosier than you ever thought it would in 2050. Vermont is a place where all the people are engaged, where all the historic buildings are beautiful, and where all the downtowns are strong and filled with affordable housing for all people. Not only that, but all the floodplains and village parks are helping to protect villages and downtowns from climate hazards. All people have the opportunity to thrive and start businesses and find economic opportunity. And no place is left behind, no matter how small or how remote. 
And if that is not enough for you, at the end of every crosswalk in Vermont, and there are many now, there are unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> it doesn't get better than this, and it's all thanks to the designation programs. In fact, the designation programs have succeeded so wildly that there is now a daily newspaper devoted just to sharing all the amazing news that is coming out about the designation programs. That would be the Vermont Designation Daily. And in the year 2050, you were all back here in Randolph Center invited as guest editors to help write the front page, front page news of this anniversary edition celebrating the reform of the designation programs and that summit way back in 2023 that started it all. You are here to dig in specifically to these key topics and themes because the designation programs have moved the needle on every single one of them and have helped to achieve the progress that we wanted to see. Climate resilience and adaptation, housing access and growth, diversity, equity, opportunity, all of these amazing topics. Now your task sitting at tables with these leaders is to write this front page news and to make the best front page edition of the Designation Times that Vermont has ever seen. And by the way, it is now the top daily in Vermont. The circulation is pretty amazing. So at your tables over the next hour and 10 minutes or so, you're gonna write a really bold headline about your topic. If you're sitting at the designation type, or I'm sorry, that's afternoon. If you're sitting at the climate resilience and adaptation table, write an amazing headline about what happens when the designation programs just completely manage to move the needle on that, or housing, or business growth, whatever your topic happens to be. You're gonna help us identify what the impacts and outcomes actually look like if designation programs really do make an impact in these areas, what is it that we're seeing? What are those top goals and outcomes and indicators that we're gonna notice in the year 2050 if we really do this right? We're gonna have you write 10 on the poster and rank the top five that we should really be aiming for and looking at. And then the part where we honestly have no idea what you're gonna come up with, but we cannot wait to see is this map down at the bottom of Livability Valley, which is the prime poster child of designation success in 2050. This valley right here in Vermont has taken those reform designation programs and put them to work and has seen progress on so many fronts, all because we have reformed those programs and made an impact in choosing the way to structure them the way to align benefits with the work and action that needs to happen to move the needle on these topic areas. So we're gonna to look to you to help us shape this great map on the front page news and show us what has actually happened on the ground in livability since those reformed programs were put to work. What are the changes we're seeing? In what types of places? What activities and benefits? And where are activities and things not happening thanks to the designation programs? You have 75 minutes. I mentioned that you have a village. You have lots of supplies that I'll show you in a minute. And you have a resource team, which is all the Smart Growth America staff, Department of Housing and Community Development staff. And you have lunch waiting. So you have to do a really good job and get this done if you want to have lunch. Let me give you a little deeper introduction to what you have. On your tables right now, you have a packet of materials that contains a little bit more about your mission and what lies ahead. So I'm gonna let you go in a minute. You can open this up. You do not have table facilitators. It is your collective job as your table village to move your group through this process. There are 10 key roles that we think really make the difference in moving your group forward. And in your packet, you'll find a list of these, but you'll also find a packet of individual cards. It'll look something like this. So we're gonna ask your groups to assign all of those roles. You may not have 10 people at your table, which means, of course, 
Some of you are going to have to wear multiple hats, which will make you feel right at home. Here are a few snapshots of what they are. You might be the librarian, which is the keeper of the resource materials. You're going to find some handouts and resources in these packets that you may not want to use right now. You might. You might want to turn to them. It's your librarian's job to keep them handy and pull them out and say, hey, this might be handy to our discussion. You'll have a shopkeeper who's in charge of all the goodies we're about to give you, like sticky notes and foam shapes and pipe cleaners and all kinds of fun things that will make your work fun. You have a meta whose job it is is to keep an eye on the overall goal and make sure that you're moving toward what you need to do, that everybody's getting a chance to participate and weigh in. You'll have a timekeeper whose job it is to keep an eye on the agenda and make sure that you're staying on track with these sessions. You'll have an artist or a scribe. Every planning process is better when there's a creative at the table. So if you're the kind of person who likes to draw and sketch or model or make things or you just have really good handwriting and you can transfer things onto the poster neatly, that might be a good role for you. You should have a mechanic who's somebody who can fix things if you're going wrong at your table. That might mean helping the group make a decision. You'll get some dots. You might decide to take a vote. Maybe you just need somebody to tell you a joke. Whatever's going wrong, your mechanic can help set it right. Every table should absolutely have a note taker. If folks could listen up for a sec before you get too excited about your table rolls, that would be awesome. I promise you can do it in just a minute. Note taker is really important because you are capturing main ideas on your poster, but you're going to be saying a whole lot more, and we really want to hear the details. You also will not have time in the next hour and 15 minutes to have the level of conversation that will make everybody feel great about getting to consensus. I'm sorry, I wish we had that time, but we do not. So, we know there may be people who will not agree with everything that gets added to your poster who do not agree with every conclusion, and we want to hear those points of disagreement. We want to make sure that every voice is captured. That's the reporter's job. And everyone else, please feel free to write a note and stick it in an envelope if there's something you feel is important to say that does not make it onto your group's poster. Every table should have a kid. We always want youth at these events, so put on your 10-year-old hat. Your job is to question everything. Ask why, ask how, dig deeper, ask all kinds of questions at your table out of curiosity. You will have a preacher, in other words, the person at the end who is responsible for getting up and in 10 words or less conveying a powerful headline about your group's success. We will have a rapid report out, which literally means one minute per table. So this person is charged with putting some great words down and sharing them out, just that quick headline. We're going to post up all of your headline front page news posters so that at lunch you can all walk around and see them in detail and put some stickers on to show us what you love and what you don't. But we want to hear that headline from everybody. And every group may want to have a busybody or a spy or a task rabbit or whatever you want to call this person who's free to float around and check out what other tables are doing or ask for ideas or come and check out the supply tables in the back. We're going to give you some materials on your table, but we've got a whole lot more. So if there are other resources or information docs you're looking for, you want more scratch sheets, things like that, come see us in the back and we will help you out. You will get some more worksheets and things like that that you can play with at your tables if you want to do draft versions. Your tablecloths are made of paper, so please write on them and scratch them up and we make diagrams and work on that together. We've got loads of newsprint in the background. I'm just going to quickly go through what we suggest each group do in terms of moving through these activities. I want to repeat, this is a suggestion. This is your time and this is your village and you can do what you want to reach the end goal. But you have a suggested agenda that you can work through if you like. You can also abandon it and work through this the way you want. Our suggestion is that you take five minutes just to get organized, choose your roles if you haven't done so, do your introductions if you haven't done so, then spend about 20 minutes on those impacts and outcomes and really articulate, if we see amazing progress in 2050, what is that going to look like? We want to hear what success looks like in your topic area. 
if designation programs succeed. And then you're gonna end up writing those 10 on the paper and ranking your top five. We suggest you might read some sample outcomes that are in your packet, what we've heard throughout this process. This is not our team's lens of saying these are most important. They are truly just a sample. You might go around and use sticky notes and each write a couple of top ones that you think are important and then cluster them and find some themes and see where you agree and write them on your poster. It's about 20 minutes for that. We suggest you spend about 40 minutes on that map exercise, really taking a look at the map and having some thoughtful, wonderful conversations to say, where would we draw some lines? Where should the designation programs be and invest? And what kind of projects or activities should happen to move our outcomes forward? Where should they not happen? Which places should be outside the lines? If any, maybe it's none. Again, you could take some time individually to brainstorm what you think should happen in those places, to do your own versions of maps or do it in small groups and then come back together to share. By the end, try to get to one version of a map that you can all pretty much agree on and give us a legend. The little foam shapes that you're getting are great for a key if you want to do that to represent certain types of things like multifamily housing or a certain type of industrial development or maybe it's something like um, flood resilience work. But do what you like. These are your maps. You can scratch up the base map and change it however you like. Last, really share back and align yourselves as a group. Again, discuss what do you agree on, what do you not agree on, and capture all of it. By the end, write that final headline. That is what you do last. That is what your preacher can help with if that's the person who has the best words. You can all work on it together, but write an amazing headline because that is the 10 word statement you're gonna get up and share with everybody else in our rapid report up. In the end, we want to collect everything back from you, all your scratch work, all your sticky notes, so that we can harness all the great nuggets that happened. All right, I'm going to put up the first section again. We're going to be wandering around to give you more help and information. I'll give you warnings at the big benchmarks, like a warning after 25 minutes, warning when you're ready to switch to the maps. You can, of course, be on different timing, but just to let you know where you are. Have a great time in your village in 2050, and we'll see you back in 2023 for lunch very soon. so that we can read more about what you talked about. All right, five minutes to finish up, and then we'll call you up here to report out and go to lunch. We need somebody from every table to come on up, ready to report out. I think we have a handful. <laughs> You don't have to. Um, it's, no, it's fine if you do. We'll take them from you if they're if they're here. That's great. Okay, we're gonna let the first people who are ready 
come up. Let's ask everybody else for attention, please, to hear these great headlines. We won't get started until we have some quiet so that we can hear everybody's headlines. And we won't get you to lunch until we hear the headlines. I think we're going to have them to come Yep, okay. everybody come up. Okay, I think we're getting there. We have two lines, so we'll just go one at a time. So, those of you who are presenting, listen up, folks. If you're presenting, you really get 10 words or less, okay? We're going to keep you to it because everybody wants to go to lunch. So, tell us your biggest, boldest, awesome headline. Don't forget to tell us which group you were as well, if that is not clear from your headline. Okay? And come up, speak really close in the microphone so everyone can hear you. Hello. I was uh, transportation livability table 14, maybe? Yeah, table 14. Great table. Uh, so our headline is the following. Vermont villages and town centers are two places, not through places. That's it. All right, I'll go next. Tom, we were table six or four or whatever we were, business and economic development. Some of us came from six. So we summed up our various uh, sticky notes and, and points into very simply, you can get there, live there, and work there. I don't have anybody to take my hand. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, we were at the uh, Climate Resilience and Adaptation Group, and our headline is, after third superstorm of the summer, unaffected Vermont sends feds home. <laughs> so we were with Transportation Livability, table 15, and our title was, People Get It. Transportation for all makes all places better. Right, table 16, housing growth and access. Vermont grows with housing that meets the needs of all. From the greatest table in the room here tonight. Uh, housing uh, growth and access. Uh, headline is that there is a, um, Vermont's the best, best place for uh, all to live. So we were table 12 and rural land smart growth and conservation. And the headline is conservation payoff. Downtown celebrates 20 years of flood free living. So we were at Table 1 and Climate Resilience, and our headline was, One Million Vermonters Safe and Sound After Record-Breaking Rains. Uh, we were at Table 2, uh, Climate Resilience and Adaptation, and uh, our headline is, 1,000-Year Flood Briefly Disrupts Lunch Hour. <laughs> We were the other housing growth and access table, and after a long, long uh, discussion about a very creative <laughs> headline, we went with housing supply meets demand in new designated areas. <laughs> so we were table five, uh, economic development. Uh, Vermont supports local businesses and workers achieve adaptive and fair communities. <laughs> We were the um, historic and creative places table, and our headline is everything old is new and sustainable again. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow, that was pretty impressive. Round of applause for everybody. I think there were some tables who did not think you were going to get to those amazing headlines. That was really remarkable work. Thank you all for bearing with some complexity in that exercise. I know that was a challenge. Um, and we can't wait to really explore all the incredible ideas that you put together on paper for us. I can't wait for you all to go and explore some of these ideas. So just very practically speaking, it is lunchtime. We hope you enjoy about 45 minutes off to eat and mingle and network and check out these designs, in part because it's fun, but in part because all of these ideas are going to influence what we do after lunch, too. So do take some time to check them out. You're going to find some red and green and yellow sticky dots, because we need dots again today at a planning conference. Um, so take those as you walk through, and if you see an idea that you like on a poster, put a green dot next to it. If you see something you don't think is right, put a red one. If you're wishy-washy, put a yellow one. You are welcome to do that on your way over to lunch as we form a line. Um, if you ordered a special lunch or told us that you had a dietary restriction, head to the right, and there are some special lunches on the way. If they're not quite here yet, Alice will help you out. They're here, okay, great. And otherwise, dig in and enjoy some lunch from downtown Randolph's finest, who he is. Um, without, at the end of lunch, we are going to ask you to help us out by going to your next table. So we'll give you the prompt to kind of clear up, and we'll reset and get ready to go by 1.15. Um, Jerry, did you have anything else? OK, enjoy lunch. Thank <laughs> you.